Hello and welcome to this video of the course Answer Set Solving in Practice. My name is Javier Romero and here we are going to do this exercise on no goods and propagation of the solving part of the course. We are given a logic program P and our first task is to find the set of completion no goods and loop no goods of this program and the solutions for that set of no goods. And after this, we have to determine all unit resulting or violated no goods from that set with respect to these assignments. Good. Now, before we start, as always, let's quickly go through the slides that are relevant for this exercise. If you are interested in the slides where we explain what are the set of completion no goods and loop no goods and what are these solutions, you can go to have the video of the exercise on no goods of logic programs. This is the previous exercise of this solving part. Now let's just go and see what are these unit resulting or violated no goods. And we can start in this slide 326, where we have that a no good is a set of signed literals. And these no goods are violated by any assignment that contains all the literals. Now, if we go to this 3 to 7, we have the definition of what is a unit resulting literal. So, given a no good, a literal, and an assignment, the complement of the literal is unit resulting for the no good with respect to the assignment if the, the assignment contains all the elements of the no good except for the literal, and the complement of the literal does not belong to the assignment. Then in this case, we say that the complement of the literal is unit resulting. And we may also say that the no good is unit resulting. Nice. So this was this very quick review of this material. Let's go now to do the exercise. Here we have the logic program P, and we start with the first task building the completion no goods for this program. On the left side, I have written the atom-oriented and on the right-hand side, the body-oriented. Then for the atom-oriented, for each atom, here for A, here for B, here for C, and here for D, I'll write first the no goods where T of the atom appears in the no good, and then those where the atom appears with the false sign. So let's do some examples of this. For A, we have that it cannot be the case that A is true and that both the two bodies whose head is A are false. We have the body C and not A that give us A, so it cannot be the case that A is true and both bodies are false. And then we also have that it cannot be the case that A is false and that the body with C is true. Right, this makes sense. And also it cannot be the case that A is false and that this other body not B that could give us A is true. And then this is similar for these other bodies and I think we don't have to stop here. Now if we go to body oriented, let's do this example here which is a bit longer than some of the others. This is this body D not C and the no goods where this appears with the sign true are uh, these two. We say that it cannot be the case that the body is true and that D is false and that one of the bodies and that one of the elements of the body has the sign that would make the body false, right? Like D false here and here if C is true it would make the body false, hence it cannot be the case that the body is true and that the atom is also true. And then we also have this one where the body is false and that says that it cannot be the case that the body is false and that the atoms that occur in the body make the body true, right? So that D is true and C is false. Nice. Now something that we see here is that there are one, two, three, four, five, six rules here, but in this part we only have one, two, three, four and five bodies that we talk about. But what happens is that actually this body with C is repeated. 
So if we have written here the body oriented nodes for this body, we no longer have to write them here because they would be, we would just write exactly the same. And we are writing sets of nodes, so there's no point on writing twice one of those nodes. Good. So this was it about the completion nodes. Let's move now to the loop nodes. I have written here the logic program P, and here below we have the loop nodes. For this first, I have written on this side the positive atom dependency graph so that I can easily find which are the loops of the program. And these are AC, CD, and ACD, which I have written them here. And of course, we know that we could write loop nodes for every set of atoms of the program, but actually we only need those for the actual loops of the program. So we only need to write them for these three sets. Here, first I write those for the set AC, here for CD, and here for ACD. Now let's have a closer look at the ones for AC. And for A, we have that it cannot be the case that A is true and that the body with not B is false. And this is because if we go to see the rules with A and C, we see that only the uh, is that the first one a if c contains c and the third one with c if a d contains the d a so then the unique external body for this set of atoms is this one with not b that's why we have it here right so it cannot be the case that a is true and the body is false and we have a similar one for for c true right then the case for c and d is similar and let's move then to the case with A, C, D. And in this case, let's see what is what are the external bodies for this set of atoms. So these are the rules. And this has C, this has A, and this has C. So we are left just with not B and not A as external bodies. And this is what we have here, you see? Then we have the no good for A. It cannot be the case that A is true and those two bodies are false. And similarly for C and for T. Nice. Now, if you look now at the seven no goods that we obtained, you can see that actually these three are supersets of some of these ones, right? This is a superset of this one. And this is a superset of this one and also of this one. And this is a superset of this one. So what this means is that we don't really have to consider these no goods. Just to realize this, consider that if we have these no goods, this adding this does not, does not make any difference. If an assignment violates some of these no goods, then of course it will also violate all of them. Right? This is obvious. But then what we also have is that if an assignment does not violate any of these no goods, it will also not violate any of these ones because they are supersets of the others. If you don't get it right away, just think a moment about it. Also, something important is that this will not always be the case. One could think, all right, here I have AC and here ACD, so these no goods will always be a superset of these ones. But this is not the case, and to see this, we can just, for, for the sake of the example, add here one rule, A if D, and here D if A. Then for the set for, for AC, then we would also have to add here that it can, it can also not be the case that the body D is false, and similarly here, right? Because then this body for the set AC, this body would be a part of the external bodies for the set AC. And in a way, symmetrically, we would also have here this thing. Because for the set CD, now the body with, with A would be an external body, would provide, this rule would be an external support of those set of atoms. But what is interesting, these bodies, so this literal, sorry, would not be part of these no goods because these bodies are not external bodies of this set because they contain the D 
and A. So in this case, in summary, if we add these two rules, then these no goods are no longer a superset of these ones. Right, now let me then erase all of these. And what we can do now to compute the solutions for our set of completion, <coughs> sorry, and look no goods is just to copy this and move them together with our completion no goods. And then here we can look for the total assignments that are solutions for all these no goods. And we know that then these solutions will correspond to stable models of our program. Yeah. Let's go to it. Initially, we do not know the value of any sign literal just by looking at the no good because we have no unit no good. Hence, this is a moment for reasoning by cases. And then on the left side, we are going to look for solutions where A is true. And on the right side, we are going to look for solutions where A is false. Now, if A is true, then we can use this information to <coughs> simplify the no goods that we have. So for A true, we know that this A true might appear here, but not here because that's uh, atom oriented no goods. And on the right side, we can look for the rules where for the bodies where A appears and maybe we have something to do there. But what is important to make this faster is that we know that we don't have to look here and we don't have to look also here. Then let's start here. We know that uh, we can simplify the no good saying, deleting the TA there. And then we know that these two no goods can no longer be violated in any extension of this no good because A is true and there it says that A is false. Then on the right side, we can eliminate this here, eliminate this there, also here, and this no good cannot be violated by any extension of the assignment that we have. Then how can we continue from here? We can say, we can look for a no good that is unit resulting. And this is one of them, because now we have that for not violating it, it must be the case that the body not A is false. Then once we have this, this can no longer be violated. Then on the left side here, now that we have a body assigned, we have to look for the atoms whose that appear in the head of a rule whose body is not A. And then maybe we can do something here. Yes, and these, are these ones. And on the right side, we only have to care about the, the body-oriented no goods about this body. But here we already know they cannot be violated, so we just have to, to, to care about these two ones, these two. Then we can simplify this by deleting it here, and we know this can no longer be violated. And of course, before I forgot, also, I, you see, I was telling you where should you look here and there, and I forgot to tell you where should you look here. So I should have already before seen that this simplifies the rule like this. There's no good like this. And now that we have this false not A, then we also simplify these two loop no goods. Then now this becomes unit resulting for not violating it. We know that not B must be true. And then once we have this, this can no longer be violated. And also we can check this loop no good also. It can no longer be violated. And then if we go to the left side, let's see, let's look for this not B. So it appears here in these two rules and nowhere else on the left. So we can, we know this no good can no longer be violated. And then on the right hand side, we can look here, just these two. And this is like this. And this can no longer be violated. And here, I think this was 
true be right then let's continue now what else is unit now these two for example eh? and and also this here and maybe yeah that's all so let's work with this one c has to be false otherwise we violate this no good then with c false this becomes simpler this cannot be violated and on the right side let's see where c appears c appears here simplified there and also here we see that the c appears then we can also do something there so this no good can no longer be violated and this is simplified nice let's see what else is unit here we have this one so we have that it can the body must be false otherwise that no good is violated and then we can do like this then on this side we already have the ad there and here we have to check on this side so here we simplify this and the no good becomes unit and this can no longer be violated nice now one has to be cautious here not to forget things but if one forgets something it's not really a problem because one can one can always go and check that uh, that you have done everything correctly so this is also it may be the case that i have forgotten something but we have to you we all should do it uh, uh, methodically so that things go well but as i said the nice thing is that you can there's there's uh, no problem you can always check everything you have done and see whether you can infer something else nice then let me see we have these folds let's see what is unit this is unit for example and then we have to say that d is false then this no longer can be violated and then this can no longer be violated and look this becomes unit now and um, let me simplify something more with d then this can no longer be violated and this becomes simplified and there's nothing else with the d oh yes there is because here we have this one that can no longer be violated Mm -hmm. let's see okay then what else do we have now this is unit so the c the body with c must become false then this can no longer be violated and on this side this is no longer violated nothing else about this then what else is unit here this is this becomes unit so we must have that b is false and then this no longer can be violated and now with this b this no longer can be violated and then again here on the right nothing else and we are almost finishing on this side this has to be false and with this oh sorry this was already this was already uh, deleted before right because i had here false and false and then yeah this is a normal thing when you are writing and this will often happen to you so you have to just backtrack and have a look at it and then again this has to become again no this has to become false and then this no good is no longer violated and we have that no no good is violated and we have assigned i think all the atoms and bodies we have one two three four atoms which is what we had in the program and one two three four five bodies good so then we have that this is a solution to these sets of no goods and from here we can extract a stable model and the stable model is just a because here we have that C, D, and B are false, and we don't care about the bodies. So A is we know that A is a stable model of the program. Now I will clean this a bit and we go to the left hand left hand side.
everything is clean now so let's work here on the right hand side not the left as i said before we have that a is false then this can no longer be violated we simplify this here we simplify this there and then nothing happens here on the yeah no something happens that this can no longer be violated and then on the right we look for the a's and they appear there there are some a's so we delete this one and this can no longer be violated same story here and this becomes simplified now this is unit so we can infer that the body with C is false and with this this can no longer be violated and this also happens here and this no longer can be violated nice and then on the right hand side we have this one that becomes simpler this we can delete and something else about this body no nothing else then we can continue this became unit so we infer that this body is false because otherwise this would be violated and let's look for not b no more on the left side here this becomes we simplify this no good so now we have it cannot be the case that c is true so this is unit resulting and here we simplify and we delete there and that should be it for now and then this becomes unit so we can infer that c is false and then this becomes we can delete it and then we can also delete this one and we can also delete this one and for the c we also have the c here this we can delete and there are no more c's on the right hand side Ah, oh, but I forgot here we have it on the left side, so we can delete it here and there. And then let's continue what becomes unit. Here we have that false of AD because otherwise we would violate this no good. And this AD appears here on the right bank. We can delete this because they can no longer be violated. And let's see where can we continue. Nothing to do here on this side unless I have forgotten something that I could have to check. But here we know that B must be true. Then this is no longer violated. And if we go here, these two become simplified. Mm, or oh wait, this was a mistake because this was, you see here, I had the no good for B true. And this was the no good for B false. So actually what happens is that this becomes this becomes simplified and this can no longer be violated. Good that I found that we have to be careful with these things. And the nice thing is that after you have the results, you can always check whether the solutions that we obtain are indeed stable models. But what can always happen is that you have missed some solution because that it's not that easy to check. So one has to be cautious when doing these exercises. Good, then this was, we inferred that B is true. And let's see where else B appears. Then nothing here, nothing there. And also no more to look there. Then we can continue and we can infer that this body B not C is true, otherwise this would be violated. And this appears here on the right side, no longer can be violated. And here the no good becomes unit. And then here nothing else to look at and uh, And what else? Let's see. So here this became unit. So we can have for that D has to be true, otherwise this becomes violated. And where do we have it? Also here. And this can no longer be violated. And also here. So this also becomes unit. 
what we have here. The first one, at any point, you can choose uh, to propagate on any node that is unit. There's no specific criteria. What I'm doing is I'm always starting closer to the beginning just to do it methodologically, and it's easy for you to follow me. But now we could decide to go, well, I think now at this point, we only have one chance, but you know, in the previous um, steps, I have this, I could have decided to propagate on other nodes, but now it's clear we have to propagate and make this body true. And then this can no longer be violated. And it's clear we have all the nodes are not violated by the assignment, and we have assigned the five bodies and the one, two, three, four atoms. So then we finish, and we can say just looking at the atoms that are assigned to true that D and B are stable models of this program. Good, so this was it for this part of finding the solutions. Again, you have to be cautious so that you don't make any mistake, but I hope you get how you can do it. And now it's the moment to find in those unit resulting or violating nodes. For this, I have cleaned now all these completion nodes. Here I have added the other loop nodes because now we want to check all the nodes, whether they are unit or conflict with respect to these assignments that I have written here. And also note that given that these no goods are supersets of this one, we only have to care about this one when some of these have become unit or conflict. Good, then let's start here with this empty assignment, and this is very easy because there's nothing unit or conflict with respect to this assignment because there are no unit or empty no goods here. So that's easy. No unit or conflict, no goods with respect to this one. Now for the second one with TC, let's go and have a look at the no goods where TC appears, as we have here. And given that the, the sign literal that says that the body AD is false is unassigned, then this is unit resulting. Then TC also appears here and there, and these two are unassigned, hence these are unit resulting no goods. Now here we also have TC, this is not assigned, hence a unit resulting no good. And let's see more TC, yes, it appears there, hence. This is unassigned and this is a unit resulting no good. And no more TC here. Given that now these two are unit resulting, it could be the case that here we also had some. But actually, this is not the case because here there are two unassigned. Hence, this is not unit resulting. And we have these five. One, two, three, four, five unit resulting no goods. Nice, then let's move on. And uh, I think what I'm going to do is to clean all this. And I think this will make our life easier here. Then let's continue with this assign assignment where the body D not C is true. So this body appears here. Then the other literal is unassigned and this is unit resulting. And this body only occurs here on the right side now, here. And this becomes unit resulting also here. And this becomes unit resulting. And nowhere else we can find this body D not C. Good, then these are the three unit resulting no goods with respect to this assignment. Now let's undo this and go for the next one, where we have that C is false and the body with D and not C is also false. So first let's have a look at this C false. We have it here and the other literal 
is unassigned, hence this is unique resulting. And then C falls here, the other is unassigned, this is unit resulting. C falls. Let's see what happens with the other two. And I don't see anything else with C falls. Then we can move on and consider the other sign literal that D not C is false. Then this becomes unit. And here on the right side, I have D not C false. Okay, good. You see, here we had false C and false of D not C, and so now this becomes unit also. And let's see if there's something else. No, this D not C only appears in these ones. So this is it. We have this for unit resulting no goods. And now it's the moment of this one. So let's do, let's consider first true A. We do this here. And then here. And the other literal is unassigned. Hence, we get that this is unit resulting. And here we have these two. So this will not be unit resulting. Also, we can already check that none of this will be assigned by the others. And let's continue. So with true A, which also appears here and here, and it's also here now that I'm at it. And uh, with respect to this one, we will make D true. Now I'm going a bit in the different order, but I hope you follow me. So then this is also unit resulting. And here, look, this is interesting because one would expect now, given that this true of not A does not appear here, that this would be unit resulting. But actually, it's uh, it's not the case because we have that the body not A is false. Hence, this is not unit resulting and this is not conflict. So this assignment or any of its extension cannot violate this no good because we have that the body not A is false while well, here it requires it to be true to violate this hence we can already say this won't be violated and this is neither unit resulting nor no conflict and then again here we have this one and a similar situation right because here we have false a and here true a hence this kind of be violated and let's look for more of this false not a it also appears here and it also appears here and also here and here i have forgotten these ones hence this becomes unit resulting and this becomes also unit resulting. And here, this is also unit resulting. And okay, we, I had forgotten also this on this part. And given that we will also have true of D, this becomes unit resulting also. But okay, now the problem is that I've already jumped to consider some of the ones with TD. So let's go back to do things in order and consider TD here. So this is it. But these two, we don't have any of them. Yes. Oh, I had forgotten this at this point. So actually, this is also unit resulting because we have td and false of not a
and let's look for more of these TDs and we have this TD, hence this is a conflict no good, right? Because we have TD and false of not A and more TDs here TD also appears there, but we no longer have any of these in the assignment and I think then we can stop. Let me, I think, now let me quickly check whether I have missed something. T of A, only there. No, okay, good. Then we can stop. We have here this one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And see this uh, unit, and this can only be the case. If here we have this also unit, and here there's also this. This in fact is conflict, but this is on. But this here is only unit. Good. And now what I will do for these two, in these two, for these two there are no unit or conflict nodes. But what I will do is <coughs> I will stop now the video, clean it, and 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 paint how do the the, the nodes look like after. Uh, in a way simplifying them using the assignment, right? And I do it for both of them, so that if you want, you can check with your own exercises. And touchan, this is how it looks after simplifying the no goods using the assignments. Basically what happens is that there is no no good that is unit or conflict. And in fact, for all the no goods, it's always the case that there is so now I'm talking about this first assignment, but the same holds for the for this second one here at the end. It is always the case that for all no goods, there is some literal such that the complement appears in the assignment. And actually, if you look at both these assignments, they are total assignment because they assign all the bodies one, two, three, four, five bodies, and also the four atoms here. I painted it for this assignment, but this is also the same story for the one below. So these are total assignments that they do not violate any no good, and hence these are solutions to this set of no goods. And of course, these are the solutions that we have calculated in the previous part of the exercise. So then this closes this exercise on no goods and propagation. I hope you have understood it. You have had some fun and see you in another video. Ciao.